What's up, what's up, what's up, you two? First name, JC on, last name, Ditto. JC on, Ditto, and I'm back at it again with another video. Alright, so boom. Alright, so boom. It's a rainy day and I'm already annoyed. But today is the day that I um go and get this stupid pap smear shit. Oh my god. You guys have no idea how like um uncomfortable this is about to be. I think I like I cleaned up my little, you know, my solid area down there <laughs> cleaned it up um i guess it's more so for my comfortability versus my um doctor because i don't think she really cares i'm sure she's you know seen multiple people um with the same you know whatever you know oh that's how i'm looking today um yeah I hate filming in New York because everybody just be in your face. I think, hold on. Filming in New York, everybody just be in your face. It's just a weird, awkward um, thing to do. But, yeah, before I do anything and go anywhere, I'm gonna grab me some breakfast um, at this local spot. I am starving, yo. Got a book in it? Can I have uh, egg and bacon on a roll? Yeah, with a little bit of mayo. Nah, I'm gonna get this breakfast in the spot, right? This is a little shop by me, but I'm nervous. Um, I think the last time I did something like this was a while ago, probably like a while ago. Um, but again, if you want to make sure that you, you know, you're healthy, everything's going okay over there, you have to do what you have to do. Like, um, I'm going to go more in details and a breakdown of um, everything, like just the process of this, you know, you have, you still have the same organs if you are a pre-op trans man. Um, and I'm able to have this conversation once again in the coffee shop for the people. Because to be honest, eh, I don't even care. I've gotten to the point where, um, again, I'm trying to open up a little bit more within myself and just be a little more comfortable um, speaking, etc. So as I can see, it's raining. Kind of nasty out here. He just said somebody take their medication. Yeah, <laughs> yeah New York <laughs> is a joke. But anyway, I'm getting on the train. about an hour ride like 45 minutes to 50 minutes um ride to where i'm supposed to be going so that's why i bought breakfast it's gonna take me a minute to um arrive there <laughs> uh yeah so i'm about to prove to you that old new york is eating the train guess what she's doing eating bacon egg and cheese as well hers is on the hill um, I, I didn't get the chance to ask the doctor if I could um, document everything, so I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I'm in the you know, <laughs> exam room. Um, they just took my vitals, and um, hopefully I am able to document this. And um, 
waiting for her now. I'm going to ask her if I can document it. If I can, this is going to be dope. Uh, I was supposed to take this pill. Let me show you guys. I was supposed to take this pill. It's like one little pill that she prescribed to me 20 minutes before seeing her. It's an anti-anxiety um, pill. I think it's called Lorazepam. Um, but I don't do well with like medicine and like extra stuff. Um, she did give it to me because she wanted to make sure that I didn't have any anxiety or any um, uncomfortable issues while we were doing this. All right, yeah, my love. Yeah, I was supposed to take it, but I didn't. So I'll let her know that. Um, Cause I just wanted to actually experience the experience without having to take anything. But if you're like super anxious and you have crazy bad anxiety, you can take it. Um, well, it depends on who your um, physician will be. And like I said, she was very caring about my mental space and you know wanted me to be as comfortable as possible. Um, I made sure to clean up down there a little bit. Well, I'm not like, I didn't over clean or under clean or none of that. Um, I just wanted to be as, I'm not crazy. All right, you know, we're not going to talk about my. where my hands are perfect okay this is my touch here Get a little bit of cool gel so you're nervous um no a little okay. bit probably try to, like, um, relax re exactly perfect. okay so try to relax your your like butt and then okay. perfect and if you can do that um it's gonna be a lot more comfortable nothing should hurt if it hurts please tell me like uh, like painful no, yeah there should okay. be, it's gonna be like uncomfortable feeling or like maybe a strange sensation but nothing should cause pain okay okay so now you're gonna feel a little bit more of my touch here and then the speculum going in okay okay that was the worst part okay we're like halfway done Feel a little weird sensation here. We're almost done. Oh. We're done. Uh, right. uh, right to there. So what's the, what does this test like? So now you'll be able to like tell what's going on. So this looks for any abnormal like cells or changes caused by HPV. It's a really good sign that the bleeding has stopped. That makes me think it may have been related to the hormones and like when you were missing doses um, and it just took a little bit of time to be doing them on the same day, right. you know, to kind of like re-regulate. Um, this will tell us though, if there's any, everything else any like other cellular changes okay caused by hpv so that's what it is for okay. so it's, it's a cancer thing basically okay. um and then also it, depending on what you find then i would still probably need to get the um ultrasound maybe i think we said I, well let, let's let me let you get dressed and then we can we'll talk. talk about it yeah. okay all right Here, let me give you this this is for the goop Got it. All right. Um, thank you. Right okay. For those of you who know, or those of you who may not know, um, I am a transgender man. Um, so for the past two years, I've been having these crazy, crazy cramps. Like when I say way more than before I even um started my um transition. When I say cramps, I mean like 
bad, excruciating pain with no blood, no period, no menstrual cycle, nothing, just painful. Whether at night, it happens mostly at night or during, um, like, if I'm about to have an orgasm or anything like that. So, it's painful. Or after I have an orgasm, it'll hurt after the fact. And it would just be, I would just be in pain. And I'm like, yo, this is not, you know, this is not normal. So for the first three months of it happening, I didn't catch on to it because I'm like, okay, as long as I'm not getting um, my menstrual cycle, I, whatever, you know. Um, then the sixth month came through and I'm like, okay, this is still going on. Then I started getting spotting and I'm like, whoa, that's weird. Now, that's a problem. So I spoke to um, my provider uh, at my, um, that takes care of everything I need to be taken care of. So um, she was just like, have you been taking your hormones at the right time and so on and so forth? I'm like, you know what, I haven't, maybe that's why. So um, I started getting regular on my doses and everything again, still in pain, still. Yo, when I say it's like, um, it's bad. So. I'm like, okay, if I'm regular on my on my hormones now, what is the problem? So she thought it could have been my dosage to change my dosage. I went from um, taking one dose to another dose. I'm not going to say the dosage because, again, like I've said in previous videos, I don't like to put my dosage in videos because a lot of people tend to go to black market and get hormones and use the same dosage that they hear other people use so that's just a disclaimer so that you guys know i would not be saying that um so in that same time i'm like okay now this is becoming a lot because Only am i not feeling well but this is like mentally playing with my mental space like i'm like going through stages of and that's the time i had find out that I had, you know, the cyst in my chest and needed to get that taken care of because I reasons why I couldn't get my top surgery. So, um, I'm like, okay, boom, what is, what are, what, what are we doing now? What's the next step? So she's like, take this dosage and we'll see what happens. Now, time goes by, I'm taking my stuff regularly. I'm doing what I have to do. The doses has changed and still no no nothing is fixed so i'm like okay like at this point what happens i tried to fix it um but the person i was seeing at the time left so when they left i had to wait another three four months to speak to someone else so now i'm like damn this is still happening it's st and it was happening twice a week sometimes three times a week late at night i would have to take a motrin to and make it go away. It kind of felt like I was being back to my old self again. Um, and I know people in the comments will be like, oh, well, you used to be, you know, like that type of stuff doesn't really hurt my feelings. And I'm just going to put that out there now so that anybody who wants to argue with um, people under the comments, you don't have to. Um, things like that do not hurt my feelings because I know who I am. I know where I come from. I know what I have. I know how everything works. I just want to live my life the way I want to live it, healthy and with no problem. So um, telling me, oh, you used to be a woman, so you, yes, I have all my organs still. So of course, I know that things like this will happen, which is why I take very big precautions and take really well, good care of my health and all of that comes first. Um, so fast forward, um, this mostly happens for pre-op trans men, meaning trans men who haven't had the operation of getting uh, a um, fallow, which is, you know, for, I'm going to put it in the terms of the communities that are out of our community who haven't gotten the penis or sex reassignment surgery. If you have not gotten that and you still have your female organs, you will experience having to get a pap smear. Now, does everybody get pap smears? No. Some women don't even get pap smears. Some studs don't get pap smears. Some, just like, you know, some men don't get prostate, um, their prostate checked. 
people just don't like to go to the hospital to do checkups. Um, but it's even worse when you're someone who's trying to transition into becoming a man and your health and your and you not having that surgery, your health is important to you, but you still have to you have to get your checkups. You have to get your your pap smears, you have to go to the gynecologist to check and make sure everything there is fine. Whether it's a smell, because again, when you're taking hormones, everything changes. Everything. Your body changes. Your, 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 everything has to be adjusted. Therefore, you have to do what you have to do. My um, provider, the new provider that I, I got, she felt like, you know, this was the best route to go. Now, I did get one prior to transitioning. I got another one a year after, but within that year, I was still kind of like very comfortable with the, my old body. But now it's been four years of transition and I'm just like, I was very, very nervous about doing it. Um, I was nervous, I was uncomfortable. Um, I had to figure out how I was gonna do it and when I was gonna do it. Because if she felt as though, if I had to also get an ultrasound, which ultrasounds are mostly, you know, for women to find out they wanted to know if I had cervical cancer. Because, you know, you want to rule out everything that's out of the way. But prior to doing my ultrasound, she wanted to first give me a pap to make sure that everything down there is okay first. Then proceed to um, worry about the next step. So, I, um, I was nervous. I'm not going to lie. I was scared. I was... I, I was uncomfortable. So she offered to give me a pill. Um, so she offered this anti-anxiety um, pill, which came in this bottle. It's just one pill. As you can hear. Sorry. As you can hear it, it was one pill. It's one pill in there um, that she offered for me to take to relax me, to get rid of, like, that anxious um, feeling that I will have when... Um, taking when doing this test or whatever the case may be and i was just like you know what just go ahead and i just because she said she asked me if i have taken perks or anything like that before and i had to work after and i didn't want to feel drowsy or feel woozy so she was like you know what don't take it then try, just try to be you know as comfortable as possible and you guys will watch the video of that and see the process of me going to the um to my provider to get that checked up and figured out figure out what is the issue and what has been happening and why is this happening because um I have heard a couple of trans men going through the same thing and I have heard I have had people ask me how do you go about doing this and um again guys it's imperative that you take care of your health. As a trans man, you're putting, you know, a new everything into your body. And you, you, not only your mental health is important, your physical health is important. Your medical health is important. You want to make sure that everything going in your body is good. It's not from a black market. It's not bad for you. And that you get your labs, you get your blood tests, you blood, everything has to get taken care of. So, no, transitioning is not a cake in the park. No, a walk in the park, sorry. It's not a walk in the park. It takes a lot. Um, as uncomfortable as it may be, you have to do what you have to do. And when you come in terms of who you are as a person, honestly speaking, again, like I said before, I don't take... I know what I have, you know, I know what's going on in my body and I'm fine with it. Um so yes, watch the video of me going to my doctor to um get my pap smear. I look nuts in that video. Um, and again, if you if you need a place where um you can people who are reliable for your for your tests and things of that nature, Canon Lord is the best place you I can think of for you. Um 
Uh, there are two locations. Sorry, there's one on um, 18th Street and there's another one on um, in the Bronx, and they are amazing, amazing, amazing people. Uh, what's up? What's up? What's up, YouTube? First name JC on, last name Ditto. JC on Ditto, and I'm back at it again with another video. All right, so boom. Today's video is gonna be real serious, real conversations, real talk. No jokes, nah, for real, nah, all jokes aside. Uh, it's gonna be a real, 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 real conversation today about real life matters and real things that people go through and don't wanna speak about and don't wanna touch upon this topic specifically. Um, in any community, honestly, it affects any community, but I'm speaking for my community, for the trans community, um, for trans men. Uh, a lot of people think that we don't really go through nothing. We just, you know, pop a shot or take a pill, grow a beer and become men, which is not the case. We have to nav navigate through life and go through hardships like everybody else does. Um, so yeah, the topic is getting a pap, having a pap smear and why is a pap smear even important or spoken about when it comes to men and trans men? Well, trans men. In our case, um, why are we getting pap smears? Why do we need to see a gynecologist? You know, things like that, that makes us uncomfortable, but we still have to handle it because it's important for our health, our health, as far as a pre-op trans man goes. If you're post-op, um, it doesn't really um, concern you, but you may or may, ha may, or may not have went through that prior to um your, your post-op surgery so watch this video um learn a little bit about things that you may or may not be going through and for the community outside of mine be receptive to ed being educated and um understand where we may or may not be coming from uh and also just hey watch your video all right i swear i had to take my clothes off um everything she let me keep my sweater on I, she let me keep my hoodie on and as you can see i'm literally laying down butt naked from the bottom down um i had on socks so legs up kind of propped up like if you know i'm about to give birth and shit um sorry for my language um and then she you know she can i guess she can sense me being so tense and being so like nervous so she um i think at first she puts a spe look listen we're all been in sex ed sex education class all right and we took some sex ed courses so y'all know what that looks like when you're about to get a pap smear and again like i said there are some women that i know who've never actually been to a gynecologist who's ne who've never um actually gotten a pop a pap so like listen okay <laughs> And for for a trans man to be in that position is it's it's a terrible thing. That's like how men don't like to you know get their prostate checked because it's it's a weird, uncomfortable thing to do when it's something you're not used to doing in a position you're not used to being in, and then for someone to penetrate you with a ah, it's just sorry. As I, listen, I don't even want to think about it no more. But yes, they um. Like I said, they can give you a pill to relax you, but she inserted it. It was quick. It was one, two, three. Um, I didn't really. I felt okay after. Like it was, it was fine. She didn't make it awkward. She was very nice. She was polite. Um, she felt that I was tense the first time she tried to put the spindulum or whatever they call it, the swab in. So she kind of, you know, told me to just relax, scoot down, calm down, and. Went in, came back out, swabbed it in, blah, blah, blah. It was a gooey, mushy thing. And she gave me something to clean it up. It was, it was, it was a weird experience, but it was, it was well needed. Um, so they're going to run tests on that particular thing that they found inside, whatever they found inside. Hey, when it came out, it was clear. Like it was, it was nothing in there. She put it, after she swabbed it up, she put it in the cup or whatever. It was really nothing visually, but obviously they got to take it for tests. Um, no, 
it was just clear. So you, my, I'm clean, all right? <laughs> um, yeah, and I had to make sure to like kind of shaved, clean it up. Um, I'm not always hairy, but um, hey, I grow hair is natural. But I try, I try to make sure I could be as comfortable as possible. Cause when you got a clean slate down there, like you will. I didn't shave. I actually neared. I don't shave. I use um this nair right here, D bomb. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I know people are gonna be like, oh, this is the feminine traits we're talking about. Listen, I don't care. All right. There are men who take care of themselves. Okay. Um, but yeah, I made sure that, and then, yeah, it made me a little bit more comfortable than I thought I would be, but it was good. She, um, she's supposed to be calling me in a few days time to let me know what the results are and depending on those results and if whether or not I'm still having pain, which I haven't in the last three weeks, I haven't had none at all, which is odd because it usually happens every other week, every week, actually. So, um, yeah, so she's going to give me a call to let me know and before I decide to go actually to do the ultrasound because ultrasound costs money if you don't have insurance. Um, yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching um, this video. First name JC on last name Ditto. JC on Ditto. And yes, um, by the way, guys, I moved, which is why I have not been able to do cooking videos yet because I'm settling myself in.